One day when I was a junior in high school, the bell had just rung and I was on my way to art class. It was on the furthest end of the school, so I was walking pretty quickly to get there in time. All of a sudden, an announcement came on the intercom. It was the secretary from the front desk of the school. Her voice was shaky as she announced that the school had just been placed on lockdown and everyone needed to get inside the room closest to them and follow lockdown procedures. Before hanging up, she said that this was not a drill. There was silence for a moment before total chaos erupted in the hallways. Everyone was running around and there were papers and books being scattered about. I was nearly to the art room at this point, so I ended up just sprinting there. When I got there, the room was bustling with people running in all different directions. After letting a few more people into the room, the teacher decided to close the door and lock it. We turned off the lights and then all gathered in the back of the classroom where we wouldn't be visible from the window in the door. It was almost completely silent in the room despite there being at least 30 people in there. I was doing my best not to expect the worst. Maybe this was just a false alarm. The teacher got a notification on her phone and we watched as her eyes grew wide as she read it. In a hushed voice, she informed us that there had been a murder in a neighborhood down the road from the school, and the police had reason to think the suspect was hiding somewhere nearby, possibly in the school. I couldn't believe what was happening. This seemed like something from a horror movie. One of the younger girls in the class was so scared that she was crying and shaking, and a few other kids were trying to comfort her. Because I was sitting closest to the supply closet, the teacher asked me to go in the closet and grab a blanket. The supply closet was a very spacious walk-in closet with rows of shelves on either side. I scanned the shelves looking for a blanket when all of a sudden I noticed something strange. In the back corner of the closet were long pieces of fabric hanging up that were used for sewing projects. Behind the fabric, I saw a pair of dirty shoes. Someone was hiding back there. I wondered why they weren't with the rest of the class when all of a sudden it hit me. Was that the murder suspect? My heart was beating like crazy. I knew the best thing I could do was pretend I didn't know the person was there. Trying to appear as calm as possible, I grabbed the blanket before turning off the lights in the closet and shutting the door. I handed the blanket to the girl before going up to the teacher and whispering to her what I had seen. I knew if the other students found out what I had seen, there would be a panic and that would not end well. I could see the fear in the teacher's eyes, but she said nothing, just picked up her phone and sent a message to the front desk. 10 minutes of silence went by before the teacher got another notification. She then stood up and told us that she had been told that we needed to walk calmly out of the classroom and go to the middle school across the street until the school was cleared. We did as we were told. Part of me was sure that the suspect was going to chase after us, but the closet door remained shut. Once we were out of the school, we began running at a full-on sprint until we reached the middle school. We stayed there for hours until our parents were eventually able to come pick us up. On the news that night, we found out that the SWAT team came to the school and was able to capture the suspect without anyone getting hurt. A shiver goes down my spine anytime I go into the closet, even now. One day I was walking to math class and one of my friends stopped me to ask if I was ready for the test we had that day. I told her I was confused because I thought the test wasn't until next week. She insisted that it was today and she said she had been up all night studying for it. My heart sank. The test was a huge part of my grade and I wasn't prepared for it at all. I was so panicked that I told my friend to tell the teacher I was sick and I was going to hide in the bathroom. She told me she would. I quickly ducked into the nearest bathroom and went into the last stall, preparing to spend the next hour on my phone. I was hanging my backpack up on the hook on the stall door when all of a sudden an announcement came through on the intercom. It was the school principal. He said that the school was now under lockdown and that this was an emergency. Everyone was to get to the nearest classroom and follow lockdown procedures. At first, I assumed this was a drill until all the lights went out, leaving me in pitch darkness. This had never happened in any of our drills before. Was there actually a real emergency? I frantically texted my friend from math class and asked her if she knew what was going on. She texted me back right away and said that a male student had been seen threatening another male student over a knife. It was supposedly an argument over a girl, but the rumor was that the guy was completely deranged and there was no telling who he might hurt. I had little to no protection, so I was terrified. I climbed up on the toilet seat so no one would be able to see my feet, and I tried to stay as quiet as possible. Several minutes went by before I heard footsteps enter the bathroom. It was someone crying, but I couldn't figure out if it was a boy or a girl. They entered the stall next to me and closed the door. I heard something metal fall on the floor and I looked down to see the point of a long silver knife. I don't know what went through my mind at that moment, but my sheer panic caused me to make a run for it. 
I unlocked the stall door and started sprinting through the hallways. I kept running until I got out of the school, my arms in the air as I came face to face with an army of police officers. After they patted me down, I explained exactly where the suspect was. Luckily, they were able to catch the guy without anyone getting hurt. It turned out that the guy didn't end up stabbing anyone, he just threatened him. He did, of course, still get into plenty of legal trouble, and he hasn't been back at school since. When I was a sophomore in high school, I was sitting next to my best friend Kayla in geometry. The teacher had finished the rest of the lesson and was giving us the rest of class time to get a head start on homework. Kayla was trying to explain to me a problem I didn't understand when all of a sudden we were interrupted by the intercom. There was an announcement that we were under an active lockdown and everyone needed to shelter in place immediately. We asked the teacher if she had been warned that we were going to have a drill, and she told us no. The teachers were always warned about lockdown drills, so this was when we realized this could actually be a serious thing. The teacher locked the door and turned off the lights. Then we began working together to push our heavy metal desks up against the door so that no one could get in. We then hid in a corner of the room. I was tucked underneath the teacher's desk along with a few other students. We were all quiet, checking our phones to see if we could figure out what was going on. I was looking through the news app when I saw that there was a crazy man believed to be on drugs that was involved in an assault right by our school. It was believed that he may have entered our school and was still on the loose. I shared this information with the class and we were all even more terrified. A few girls started to cry and some people were texting their parents to let them know what was going on. I had a sister who was a freshman who was also in the building and I texted her to see if she was okay and ask if she knew what was going on. Fifth. 15 painful minutes went by before she texted me back. She said someone had been banging on her classroom door and screaming profanities for the last 10 minutes, but they had finally gone away. I decided to keep this information to myself, not wanting to freak my classmates out even more. But before long, I heard yelling in the distance and held my breath, hoping that whoever it was would just pass by the classroom. But before long, there was a sudden banging at the door, followed by a crazed laughter. The man began taunting us, telling us that he had a gun, and there was no point in hiding because he was going to get us. We were horrified, but did our best to stay quiet. Our teacher was on the phone with 911, giving them a whispered update of what was happening. Suddenly, there was a loud gunshot from the hallway, causing several of us to cry out loudly. The man outside laughed even harder. There were shouts from further down the hallway and I understood to be police officers. They demanded the man drop his weapon. After several requests, they tased him and I heard him screaming like crazy. Around 30 more minutes went by before we were finally told that the school had been cleared. The man had been taken into custody and we were free to go. Sleep tight.